All right, one of your favourites today, addition of ordinates. But uh, this time we're going to use it with trig functions. So here we go. So if you have a read through, there's a few key um, features that's in the green box above there um, about um, what to do and what to look for when you're doing trig functions. But we'll just start with an example. So I'm scrolling up the page here. Using the same scale and axis, set the graphs of y equals 2 sine x and y equals 3 cos 2x. So let's um, do those. So sketch those individually. So I'm just going to go straight for my axis here. I've looked at my domain. It says it's between 0 and 2 pi. Nice big axis there. X. So for y equals 2 sine x, you've got an amplitude of 2 and a period of 2 pi. Okay, amplitude there, it's 2 pi on 1 because the number in front of the x is 1, so that's 2 pi. So let's sketch that one. So go up to 2, down to minus 2, period's 2 pi. Break it into four pieces, so all very familiar stuff I hope by now. 1 pi on 2, 2 pi on 2, 3 pi on 2, 4 pi on 2, which is 2 pi. And of course a sine graph, I'm doing this one in um, blue. Sine graph starts in the middle, goes up to the top, back to the middle, down to its minimum, and then to 2 pi. Try and join that up. Close enough. Might just fix up that point that's not quite a minimum there. We'll rub that out. That'll be fine. Put it there. Now it's perfect. And that is y equals 2 sine x. Now we're going to draw in y equals 3 cos 2x. So for this one, Amplitude's 3, period is 2 pi on 2, so 2 pi on 2 is just pi. So we need to start with one period, break it into four pieces, so that'll make that pi on 4, pi on 2, 3 pi on 4, and because we're sketching it between 0 and 2 pi, we're actually going to need two periods. So 3 pi on 4, 4 pi on 4, 5 pi on 4, 6 pi on 4, 7 pi on 4, and it's a cos graph, so it will start starts at 3, down to the middle, down to minus 3, back to the middle, and then back to 3. Maybe I'll sketch that bit in first, looks something like that, and then it repeats. So down to the middle, to its minimum, back to the middle, and then back up to where it began. So for this cos graph, we've finished with two periods. Okay, that's fine. And now the last part, maybe I should label that, y equals 3 cos 2x. And for the last part, now what we do is we have to do the addition of the ordinates. So imagine drawing in the little horizontal or little vertical line. So at zero, I'm drawing in a line there and a line there, and I'm adding those two. Uh, should Sorry, that's in the wrong spot there. Because it's zero, zero plus whatever the green graph finished at is going to finish at the same place that the green graph did. Have a look at um, just before pi on 4 where the two graphs are equal. So we need to double that value there. Something like that. Now what I'm looking for now is where you've got the gra one graph is positive and one is negative. So I'm looking along about there and that looks to me roughly where they're equal. So the graph is coming down like that. 
what, how far does it come down? Well, look at pi on 2. The y value for the green graph is minus 3, but the y value for the blue graph is 2. So when you add that, negative 3 and 2 is negative 1. So that's going to come down to negative 1. Okay, this value at 3 pi on 4 is an, an easy value. At 3 pi on 4, um, the green graph is 0, the, so you just add that to whatever the blue graph is, which puts it right on the blue graph. And you can see halfway between that and the previous point, that's where the negatives and the positives are equal. So our graph sort of at the moment is looking like this. Okay, so what happens after that? Well, the graph doubles. That looks like about up here. Uh, when we get to pi, then you can see what's happened again. At pi, um, the, green, the blue graph is on zero. So when we add that, our graph will look like this. And I'm now looking for where the graphs are equal again. So that's about here. One's positive, one's negative. Mark that in there, so see if I can continue this on a bit. Okay, so at just after 5 pi, oh, well, at 5 pi and 4, we know we've got to go through there because the green graph was 0. Then our values get doubled. So we're down here somewhere. At 3 pi and 2, this is where our minimum is going to be because the blue graph is minus 2 and the green graph is minus 3, so that makes minus 5 altogether. So it's going to come down to there. Um, we're now about double at this point. At um, 5 pi, at, uh, what is it, uh, 5 pi and 4, no sorry, 7 pi and 4, the green graph is 0. So it just sits right on top of the blue one. At 2 pi, the blue graph is 0, so it's going to sit on top of the green one. And somewhere in between those two, you can see the positive equals the negative. So we join up all those points as smoothly as we can, and then that's what our graph looks like. Now, the black graph, y equals 2 sine x plus 3 cos 2x, It would now repeat again so that pattern we've got would now repeat again and you can see the period of the um, the period of the blue graph was 2 pi and the period of the green graph was pi so where will where will they have a common period they'll have a common period over 2 pi so the period is what's ever common to both of them so the period for that would equal 2 pi because it's often one of the questions that they'll ask you Okay, we can actually give that value there. That was 3 pi on 2 minus 5. And if we wanted to work out any of the other maximums, that then what we'd need to do is make the derivative equal to 0 and, and differentiate them. But at the moment, we're just sketching them, and that should give you all you need to do the next set of questions.